All right, so we'll start with the most complex light, and that is the spotlight. Okay. Seven on the keyboard will allow you to view lights, and this is what we have. Okay. And I'm just going to rotate this a little bit, and there we go. And now you can kind of see why I have this backdrop. Here's this backdrop. And here's this backdrop. Okay. I'm adjust this backdrop just a little bit so I can just kind of switch between the two every once in a while. There we go. So this one creates a harsh angle for the light. This one, nice smooth angle. So, before we get started, here's IPR. Let's pretend for an instance that I, I set up my camera over here. And then I IPR render this. I'll highlight the area. And it'll render just that area. If I go over here and move the light around, it will move the light and render it out in the scene. Now what we want to do is streamline this process very, very quickly so we can update it. I can see right now that this material right here takes a little while to actually render, so I might switch it. After which you can switch it back. I'm just going to create a blend material. And the blend is going to be uh, kind of an orangish. And we'll kind of substitute that, that whole copper thing. Okay, good. I'll create 3D bump and put it on that. And there we go. See how much faster that is to render? Okay, so now if I move the light, it should render almost instantaneously. Good. Okay, now. That's now that that's set up. Let's look at the spotlight. Spotlight has a lot of properties, tons and tons of properties. Okay. So the first lesson is the very top area. This is where we kind of soften the spotlight. We have three properties that are very important: the cone angle, penundrum angle, and drop off. Okay. If I adjust cone angle, that will widen out the shot. If I adjust penundrum angle, it softens inward. Okay. If I adjust drop off, it softens outward. Okay. Adjusting both will make this very nice light. Okay, real soft light in the scene. Now, let's go into shadow properties first. So we have two types of shadows. We have depth map shadows and ray tracing shadows. Okay, All lights have these same shadows. So if I go over shadows here on this light, I probably will not have to cover shadows on the other lights. Let's look at depth map shadows. Depth map runs on a resolution. 
Right now, the resolution is a mere 512. Let's take a look at the scene. The nice thing about depth map shadows is they can be a little bit more uh, fuzzy in the background, okay? So softer shadows. To adjust this, I can judge the filter size, bias, okay? Let's adjust the filter size to something really high. You can see now that the shadow is very, very blown out. Okay, let's adjust. Now, all these things work the same way. Usually what happens is there is a degree of change and then there's a fine tuning, okay? So whatever you use for the top, uh, you can also use the bottom to fine tune it. And that's some, sometimes it's a little different, but other than that, that's about it. The bias just simply softens the outside edge even more and distributes it. Okay, so let's see. If I have a filter size of 2 and a higher bias, what happens? That's right. It just distributes the fuzziness of it quite a bit. Okay, With no bias, it basically has this very harsh look. You see? And this is a very small change also. So if you want shadows that are a bit fuzzy, you can use this. And to tighten up the shadows, you can use a combination of low filter size, low bias, and high resolution. Take this for example. We'll double the resolution on this. Now, if you want shadows that are clean and crisp, we use ray tracing shadows. Now, uh, with ray tracing shadows, however, let's have mental ray on, and we have to have quality and production on, okay? Under ray tracing, this must be set, okay? We must have some kind of ray tracing available. Clean, crisp shadows. These are more like shadows that we're accustomed to, unless we're using uh, an organic shape um, or something that doesn't have a, a finite edge. Like if that was a tennis ball, it would probably use a depth map shadow. Not saying that you can't change this. Let's say I up the light radius quite a bit. Okay. There we go, those fuzzy shadows again. If I up the number of rays. I get more of a drop off. So the ray tracing shadow, I don't know. The, me, myself, I use ray tracing shadows. I hardly ever use depth map shadows. They cause a lot of problems in your scene, especially if you're dealing with like uh, transparencies or something like that. I, I would rather just use uh, the plain old ray tracing shadows, which they do render a lot better. They're a little slower though, so I'll just give you that. Okay. So there's just a little bit. So now it's a little bit fuzzy on the outside edge, but not much. All right, now that we've covered the two types of shadows, uh, let's go on to the next video where I can show you light effects.